What's going on? And now we have a question from Rose. Good morning, good afternoon, Rose. How can I mindfully keep relatively organized? I have a severely autistic teen son's room and the rest of the house when a, uh, when a violent rage often breaks furniture, child locks, locks and up ends the order of the house. It's very chaotic life here even before the pandemic. You know, Rose, my heart goes out to you because that has to be an incredibly stressful situation. And I hope that you have support that can help you at home and just for your sanity that you have someone that you can talk to. That's, you know what, that's a very interesting question and the first time I've been asked that. I guess the best thing, seeing you know, breaking furniture and child locks, I'm trying to go through my mind. I think probably if it's possible, one of the things I'm thinking of, can you find furniture, one that doesn't break because then you have the expense of repairing and replacing it. So I'm thinking like, you know, kind of those soft couches, things of that nature. I mean, it's hard, like a bookcase would be something that's wood and that couldn't break as well. What I think what, what I'm feeling right for you off the top of my head is I hope that you have an area where he cannot get to. And the thing that I'm thinking of in my own house that I have is a, I have a uh, sacred space where I have things like crystals. Hey, Cheryl. Um, I have things like crystals and I have, it's kind of a, a sacred space where I can go meditate, just journal and think about things. I would hope, Rose, that you can come up with a space that's your own where nothing can be touched, even if it's something that you put in a little box that you keep in maybe your closet. And then when you have spare time, you pull out and as a way that you can honor yourself, I think that that would be something that just to kind of centered that just for you that's sacred and that can't be touched the and you know the breaking the furniture i would think whatever you could do i mean you're that's a real challenge if if he can get out of a room and break a lock i would say just do the best you can i mean as much as you can declutter and simplify that's one going to make it easier on you and because you'll have less stuff to maintain Tell me a little bit else, Rose, about what's going on so I can maybe give you some more feedback and, and give you some tips to help. I mean, the big thing I really feel is getting that sacred space for you as well as having less stuff. If you have less stuff, then it's least likely to be, to be broken. And then I don't know if you'd also have an option, you know, of storing things. Is there a certain area that he can't get to where you could store things that are precious or not breakable? Give me some feedback and let me know. So today I have been talking about, we'll wait for Rose's response, about lessons learned during the COVID-19 pandemic. And Cheryl, Rose, if you have any lessons you've learned, we'd love to hear them. I think it's, it's a really important time and I'm grateful for the time and all the lessons that I've been able to learn. So Rose will hopefully get some more feedback from you and how I can help you be more organized. And again, you're doing, that's a really tough situation to be in. So I admire that it can't be easy. I don't know if it would be other things that are floating through my mind. I'm not sure if they would work for your situations. For example, if you say you have books, and instead of having on a bookcase where he could throw them around or do something like that, could you keep them in a, a container and then put the lid on? So that's something, again, he could probably dump that out, but a plastic container might be harder to break. So Rose says she's definitely been decluttering for years. Good job. Your large master closet is getting filled. Besides writing notes, this household of five is getting complicated. Yeah, if you have five people in a household, that's really, really a challenge. But what I'd say to you, and I did a video on this last week of working together as a family. So you say you've been decluttering, but what about everyone in the family? Have they been doing that or is it mainly you? Because if you're the only one doing that, that means other people's rooms, other people's stuff aren't getting decluttered. And so besides writing notes, I'm, gee, I don't know if that's you're saying to other, I don't know if they're kids or spouse saying, hey, 
let stuff go. What I'd encourage you to do, and again, give me more feedback so I can make it as specific as possible. What I'd encourage you to do is have everyone commit to a weekend. You know, and that doesn't mean you have to work 10 hours straight, but say, lots of love maybe asking what are best ways to. What are best ways to have the family declutter? We can talk about that. So just so you know, and it's on my feed here, and I just, I think it's, I just think I posted it to YouTube to come out at one. So definitely working together as a family. So you say, hey, this weekend we're going to commit to this. And one of the things that's really important, don't have any judgment. Don't guilt anyone. You know, I'm going to say don't approach this. Like I've been the only one decluttering for years. I'm over it. I know that that's frustrated. Frust you're frustrated, but get your frustration out here. And so what you can do is say, okay, we're going to commit to this weekend. And what I would tell you, because you've been doing it, is make a priority list. So what's most important? You know, is the kitchen a disaster? I, Cheryl, I'll get to Cheryl's kitchen. Or Cheryl, I'll get to your question in a second. Let me finish roses. So I would say make a priority list. Like, you're not going to get everything done in, in the weekend. But what do you think? Like, is it the family room? Because everyone hangs out there. Is it the kitchen? Because the kitchen's a hot mess and you're doing takeout and not eating well. So because you've done this, you're going to have to take the lead. So you figure out what is the priority? What are we going to work on this weekend? Everyone's involved. No shaming, no blaming. You can get snacks so people don't wander off. You can say, okay, this is our schedule. 10 to 12, we declutter. We take a half an hour break for lunch. Then we declutter 12.30 to 4, take another little break. Set up a schedule and then set up a game plan. And so, for instance, you might say, say if you're doing the kitchen, then you say that any expired spice goes, any expired food in the cabinet goes. And so that way you have a parameter. So we don't have to spend time like, oh, should we do that? Nope, mom said it's expired, let's let it go. And that you would get and set those parameters. And let me, I'm gonna answer Cheryl's question and then I'm gonna see what she has to say and then stew on those rows and give me some feedback and if I was tackling what you're looking for. Cheryl says, I'm the most impatient person I know. Selling my house and moving to Las Vegas made me crazy. My patience has improved and I'm growing by leaps and bounds. I no longer grit my teeth, lose my temper, and I'm learning to talk things out. That is awesome. That is awesome, Cheryl, because you, you'll have to, if you're interested, listen to the first part because one of the lessons I learned about myself is my patience in some area is the example I used with someone that posted something factually incorrect. They said no COVID deaths had happened in North Carolina. And I'm like, that's factually wrong. And, and I'm tired of people not willing to, to, to do research or think on their own. And I'm, I'm done with people who spread misinformation. So that is huge. No longer. So congratulations. That's really good. And I actually lost my temper yesterday. That's going to be at some random person at the store. And, but that goes back and I talked about it. I'm going to talk about it in another episode, but I think, I try to be as patient and respectful and understand others' perspectives and life and point of view as much as humanly possible. But when you become selfish, you're not going to follow rules that have been implemented. Uh, just anyway, I'm very proud of you. You are doing a great job and keep with that. And I think selling a house and moving would make anyone crazy. So kudos to you. That's very awesome. So. I think that's great. I think it's really important. And that's one of the goals that I hope most people have. You know, I think I know since it's been almost two months, I'm getting a little stir crazy and I still go out to the grocery store once a week and we've just really limited everything. And until my breathing gets better, I'm not exercising, but I just hope, so I understand that people are getting stir crazy. I just hope and why I wanted to do this, talk about this today is because I see people getting stuck, not moving forward. And again, no judgment, but my hope is, and I shared this in one of the earlier episodes I did about this. My hope is that when I was laid off when I lived in Los Angeles for nine months and I feel like I couldn't move and I feel like I spun my wheels for nine months. I think I was unemployed for nine months. It was a big chunk of change. And so I didn't want anyone else when I learned from that lesson, like I never want to do that again. 
And so my hope is that people, instead of staying stuck or not doing anything or just being out of sorts, can step back for a moment and have some clarity through all this. I do not discount that people are struggling. I do not discount the challenges of everyone, but that's about, to me, finding well, what good is coming out of the situation. You know, families are getting together to more. There's less pollution. You know, all of these things are really important. So that's kind of kind of my hope. But kudos to you, Cheryl. Those are awesome things. No longer gritting your teeth. That's definitely huge. And I hope you're doing out okay out in Vegas because I just read about them this morning. So sending you lots of love and light. All right, Rose, I'm going to check in with you. Did my suggestions help? I want to make sure that I'm answering questions and um, hopefully that helps. We'll see and give you a moment to respond. And of course, anyone else, I'm thrilled you all are watching. If you have any other questions or concerns, again, it just doesn't have to be about anything organizing, decluttering your life. You know, I look at that from every perspective. If I can answer a question about that mental clutter, I know I did a one of these episodes was on mental clutter and clearing mental clutter during this time. I did working with a spouse, working with kids, seeing the opportunity, maybe only before I did. And then, of course, this one. Maybe this is the fifth one. And if there are any subjects that you'd like me to go in more depth next week, I'm happy to do that. I have been taking requests and have talked about what people have requested. And I did, a, I'm kind of cracking up here as I wait to see if you all have anything. I uh, did a live interview that last Friday, last Friday, well, no, no, not this past Friday. So like 10 days ago and live TV is hard. I hadn't done live TV. I hadn't done a live interview and it was an hour long in a while. And to, to keep talking and I just, cause you have to focus and I do better on visual. And so it was done on voice America. And so they don't do any, they just have the sound and not seeing anyone to talk to was a challenge for me. At least there's a little chat room, so it feels a little bit easier. Although I will show, so I got some Life is Good tea. I love Life is Good t-shirts. And so today's, I'll show that. I should show that at the beginning, which is Believe There is Love. I was wearing this t-shirt yesterday when I ran and had a little meltdown. I should have read my t-shirt, but it's all good. You know, one of the things that I had posted in a group to get feedback, and that was really interesting because you learn, and one of the things I said, I always thanked everyone for the perspective, their words of wisdom, and those that showed me compassion. It's again, fascinating to me when you step back and read what people have to say on social media because you can really learn a lot. Like some people just had zero compassion for me and just couldn't even see my perspective. And again, it is what it is. I really try to not waste time on social media responding to that's, you know, it's not my job and make people open their minds and hearts. I try, I hope, I am hope that I've planted a seed with some people, but it can be a challenge. Should be able to message me if you don't want your question to be public, should be able to message me on Facebook and I can see that, but you know, although I'm excited, I just discovered how to see people are watching. Did Facebook change their format? So I'm sure. So at the beginning of this video, I talked about lessons I've learned. And then I gave some suggestions of how you can examine different areas in your life. You know, my hope for you is that you can take time to reflect on what you've learned for the past couple months. I mean, there are many people that have have been at home, life has changed for them, so what are the lessons you can learn? Oh gosh, I'm so sorry guys, you've been commenting and I haven't seen. Okay, so I apologize. So Rose, no I'm not, I'm, no, I'm only one to clutter here and master the household. That's the complication, the kid takes all my time, yet no respite, because school's closed and his violence is up. Okay. For then Cheryl comment, it might seem trite, but I've learned to do my own hair again. Cheryl, I'm with you. I've been using henna and I'm bad. I always miss this area. 
by my ears I always miss that. So Rose, I have a good game plan for me to instill overall my household is quite organized, but it's up ending when I need to move something important quickly. Sometimes I forget where I saved it to it's just a kind of constant upended household. I'd like to find a new regular pattern too. Okay, so a couple thoughts. One, this is a special time. You know, your child will be in school again. I don't know anything about the violence. I get that, you know, probably some stir crazy. Have you tried anything? Like I'm a huge fan. I have lavender and I will just simply do this. I don't know if that's too weird for you or you're open to it, but, um, and I go know very little about autism. I don't know if there's something I've seen. I'm a huge animal person. And I've we just had the animal adoption I did. I believe the young man was autistic, and it's really wonderful because she shares pictures. And they adopted the cat, and the cat and this young man are best buddies, and they sleep together. And it's and I've seen this with dogs too that they really have a calming effect. So I don't know if you're an open to anything like that, but I'll share those thoughts. And again, Cheryl, awesome about the hair. I think that's amazing. Rose says, this is a good game plan for me over house is quite orange. When you need to do something important, move something important, you have you forget where you saved it. So something that you might want to do. So again, you have to understand that this is only temporary. I don't know if you if school's ended and you'll do something in the summer, but then create a map. Like what I always suggest to people is, I don't, I don't know if you can pack up things. Something that might help you in a temporary situation is packing up things and putting them in the garage and labeling them and then creating a map. So I know in the garage we have, uh, we just have like a shelf, but I know that those have Christmas decorations. They have empty boxes like for our TV. And so if you know where everything is and then if he's, you know, continuing to get violent, pack things up, make a little map label so you know where everything is okay so then i want to get your long time question given this child how do you keep mementos for him for us without adding bad energy because their times are hard have been hard for years not much fun parenting them all oh my heart goes out to you okay there are a couple things you can do well, first of all, bad energy. I have no, I've done, if you look at my podcast, I've done an episode on space clearing. I don't have any sage with me here, but one thing, you know, that might be good for you is clear, clear the energy of the house. So you can do different things like say, if you can't have photograph because he might tear this up, can you do a digital, a digital photo frame? Sorry, I had to think of the word there. A digital photo frame that have memory. Again, like, I don't know if that's, you could put that somewhere so you couldn't harm it. You know, there's something like, could you create, I don't know kind of what memories are to you. Like if you had different clothes, like I had a friend who created a quilt from all their old t-shirts instead of having, you know, t-shirts from 20, 30 years ago and that were getting holes, they created the, uh, the quilt. So it's something they use and has the memory. So something like that might be an option. Tell me a little bit more about momentums. Um, and then you know what? I would encourage you as much support as you need. Is there a parent group in your area for parents with autistic people? See if there are some nonprofits or organizations that have resources. And then, you know, I, I'd encourage you to maybe there are people that I have, and I interviewed someone, and if you go to my YouTube channel, it was uh, it should still be there, and they talked about finding the gifts of autism and, and the gifts that people bring and, and kind of switching that thinking. So maybe that will help you. It's not to diminish your, diminish your problems by any stretch of the imagination, but just perhaps as a different perspective. So let me know a little bit more about mementos, and we'll talk about that. And so Cheryl, doing good, living in a condo the size of a postage stamp requires so much patience. Gosh, I bet, especially now. I wanted to come out and buy a house and be done. I took my son's advice and decided to wait until things settled. It was a huge concession. Got here the day, oh, wow, the day before the shelter in place. I had a meltdown, which was selfish, took many steps back. Okay, that I'm going to, I don't think that was selfish at all. You're human. I had a meltdown the other day and I was like, eh, it's been almost two months. I'm going to cut myself some slack. So I encourage you to cut yourself some slack. First of all, it's a huge Colorado to Las Vegas. That's a big 
that's a, any moves big, but that's a huge move. It's not like you were, you know, a drive away in 45 minutes like I did. So cut yourself some slack. You then the day before shelter, come on, you're in a new place. You're in a really confined space. Be gentle with yourself. You're doing a good job. Okay, so then Rose, the scent distraction is so clever. He likes to smell perfume, gets up close and personal. Oh, so that's good. And you know what? I'm just going to tell you the essential oils I use. This is one that I found in the store um, now, but I love, I don't know where you're located, Rose, because you can order them online, but they're called Eden's Garden. And they have, I have, I like Eden's Garden because it's not a multi-level marketing setup. And again, people do that. I respect it. It's just not for me. And, and so they're really affordable well, that way, especially if you know, what kind of scents he likes and they have well this is the one i recommended at the beginning of this so it's called thieves and i made hand sanitizer with this and it's i believe on eden's garden called fighting five and i know i've read things that people are like eh, essential oils homemade sanitizer doesn't work i don't take that point of view the thieves and fighting five were the oils that they used during the uh plague and so when they had to get the bodies they put these oils and you know put their handkerchief on and go out and we're able to not die so check out eden's garden i think that that's great and you know they're really inexpensive and i think they're good quality oils and then that way and they actually just did a you can get on their email list and they did a uh, little blog post which i need to read but it was like how can you tell make sure you're getting a good quality oil so i thought that that was really interesting but yeah definitely try try some different scents and so let me know now that I know that I have a chat thing and how to work it on. So I'm sorry, guys. What can I say that that's just, they change things. But let me know, Rose, if those suggestions help. And Cheryl, I hope you are being kind yourself. And tell me what else is going on. You know, these are tough times. You have to cut yourself some slack. I think one of the reasons I shared my meltdown yesterday publicly, because I just needed someone else Besides my husband say, it's okay, you know what, you're human. And I tried the best I can and I try to be a good human and I try to learn and yada, yada, yada. And I, I'm not perfect. I am perfectly imperfect. And also if there's anything you all want me to talk about next week, please let me know. Cause again, this, I'm doing this for you. I am doing this for you guys and what's important to you. And it's just my little way I'd like to help what I can. And quite frankly, it helps me from being so stir crazy. I was really excited. I got a new client last week and just, we obviously did Phil Shipley, my friend from high school. Hey, Phil, Phil is a firefighter. So thank you for your service. When I moved to Wheeling, I want some of that good Greek food. I always see you cooking and sharing when I'm on Facebook. This is nice, see? A friend from high school. Actually, Phil and I have known each other, I wanna say since grade school, but then I might be wrong. Sometimes I can't think of things and I'm and so concerned about that. So let me know. I mean, I've talked about other things, but what is it you wanna know about organizing? Anything else? Decluttering, we've talked about working together. What are your challenge areas? What are your problems? And then of course, Phil, at the beginning of the video I talked about life lessons I've learned during this time. Let's see, so from Rose. Thank you, so many good ideas, fantastic. That makes my heart happy. I'll check out that website. Kid mementos include baby items like birth tag. Oh, I've got some suggestions. So birth tags, ah, so first I have to say, Phil's gonna make me some Greek food. Phil's gonna make some Greek food, so you all hold him to that. And we've known each other since kindergarten. Hi, Mrs. Abraham. I'm glad you're enjoying watching and listening. So Rose wrote, thank you so many good ideas. I'll check out that website. Kid mementos include baby items like birth tags, cards, baby clothes, toys, school crafts, just mom mementos. I have two adult kids, college grads, and plenty saved from their lives. Just wonder if it's just live in the present and not save your aunt. Great, great comment, Rose. So I have a couple thoughts. <clears throat> Living in the present moment is your point of power to change. And that's how you can take action and move forward. Now, that is not to say 
that I'm saying, don't have mementos, don't have things. You have to do what your comfort level is. There, there are a couple things that I suggest you think about. A lot of, of the younger generation today don't want stuff. And so I would have a conversation with your kids, like, what is it that you all want? What is it that you want from this? Do you want all this stuff or should I let it go? Now, I always love shadow boxes where you could create a really cool, I had a child that sadly lost a baby. And so she had had this box for years and it had been 10 years and we opened it to look at it. And, you know, she at one point was able to give the crib away and went through that process. But what we did was we took, she had some baby clothes, she had some hair and create a really beautiful shadow box. So that is something again, maybe not right now. I think your child is your one child is in a very stressful place. And so definitely, that might be too much, but I love shadow boxes. I love creating something like that. I think that that is a good way to clear your clutter, but create what were the most special pieces? What are the memories that's most important to them? And when working with children, I am a huge fan of getting children's feedback because what you might think is important, they might think isn't and vice versa. And when you teach children to declutter and get organized, these are skills that they're going to take with them throughout their whole lives. I work with adults who were not taught these skills as children or, you know, if something might have happened in childhood, that really important, get the kids involved. I would not make decisions without getting them involved. Now, if they say, mom, I don't care, then create what it is for you and what would make you feel good. But again, you want to be in the present moment, honor what's important to you, but not become overwhelmed by that. Does that make sense? Let me know if that does. And Cheryl says, I intend to be good to me. Awesome. It should be fun to figure that out. Thank you. You're most welcome, my friend. We're all in this together. Oh, I'm so excited. We have questions. And, you know, I really believe when people come to these or something, that even if you didn't ask the question, hopefully it's given you some aha and insight into something. So Pam, hey Pam, long time no talk. My 21 year old says he doesn't want anything. I've got a room, and it's funny Pam, I don't know if you were here for my comment, but I just said many of the younger kids today don't want it, they're moving lightly. I've got a room full of other stuff, but I fear she will want some things later, but won't talk about it. What do you suggest? Great question. Well, there are a couple things. Maybe what you might want to do is have her over to the room and just go through some stuff. Because if I'm thinking, if I were to just think of a room with a bunch of boxes, well, I might not want that. And so if you can go through some of the things and say, hey, you know, you might not realize what I have here in the room. And so why don't we go through some things? and see if it's something you might want. And then that way, that gives her an idea. Oh, well, you know, I didn't think I'd like this, but oh, wow, you know, maybe I want my, I don't know what's in your kind of things are in your room, but you know what, maybe I would like to keep one stuffed animal from childhood. I don't know if it's your stuff or her stuff from childhood that you say, but set aside a day, make it a, a mom-daughter day and see what she wants. Now, if she says that she doesn't want it, then you just have to trust that. You have to trust that at 21, her mind is made up, she knows what she wants and to let the stuff go. Now, as I always say, you know, if you can recycle anything, if it's in good condition and you can donate, try not to just throw it all away. But I'd invite her and then, you know, I think you can make a really interesting day out of it, share some memories, maybe some bonding time, but let her see what's in there. And then maybe you'd like to, you know, prior to having her over, maybe go, unless you know already what kind of things are in there, and maybe you could do like a pre thing, like, you know, I probably think these three or four boxes have stuff that she might be interested in. But, you know, try that, have a conversation, and just say, hey, just do this for me. Let's just spend one Saturday together. We'll go out to lunch afterwards, or go get ice cream, or do something. But, if she sees it, you know, most of us are visual and most of us are visual learners. So again, boxes are visual, but if I don't know what's in them, then that's what I'd suggest you. And let me know how that sounds to you. If that's, you think that that would be feasible, then I don't know 
hopefully she's in the area to make that easier. But even if she comes home to visit, set aside. Now, what my father did was, I have a bunch of crap here in the basement that has your name on it. Come and go through it. And I did. And that's the other thing I want to say to parents is don't become a storage unit for your kids, especially if they have their own home. Say, give them like, okay, I'm downsizing. I'm decluttering. This is your stuff. Come and decide if you want it, go through it. If not, it's, I'm letting it go and put in a, put in a deadline. Okay. Cause if we don't have a deadline, then it tends not to get done. And you're still being a loving parent by saying, Hey, th but this is your stuff. Okay. It's time. They've moved on. Now, if they have maybe an apartment or in transition, you know, of course, be generous, cut them some slack, especially if you have room. Now, if you're planning on downsizing next year, then, you know, I would say, okay, you know what? Come on. We got to get a game plan and do something with this. Pam says, great idea. We can do a Zoom session. She's out of state, but I think that should work. Awesome. So, you know, then a win-win. And from Miss Rose, now that I can see the chat, I'm so excited. Rose says, yes, it does make sense. My adult kids have said I've saved too much, but that's according to their standards. Okay, so be gentle with yourself. Another project, but it's a good idea. A shadow box for my autistic teenager is a sweet idea. I do have a baby box for him, but the school crafts and childhood mementos would work perfectly in a shadow box for me. Fantastic. Carefully packed away till it's safe to display. Good. Perfect idea for me. A project in homage to his childhood. I like that a lot. Yay. This is making me so happy. You've been so wonderful to me today. I so, so appreciate the help and love your podcast. Have listened to every single one. Thank you. Thank you. You're most welcome, Rose. Come back next week. Again, my, at this point, I'm hoping, I'm thinking I'm going to do it through May. Who knows what's going to happen. But if we're here in June, every Monday, I'll plan on being here. And please, if you have a subject you want me to talk about, organizing, decluttering, and remember, if you don't know me, I talk about clutter to me is anything that prevents you from creating a life you choose, deserve, and desire. So if you have a question in one of those areas, and again, I'm passionate about bringing more mindfulness and awareness to the table, and let me know. This is for you. I want to answer your questions, and I'm so excited we have people have questions. So again, you want to send something private, shoot me an email. It's all good. I want your questions answered, and I'm happy to share your questions and concerns and bring them and you can remain anonymous. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. Thank you all. Everyone who showed up today and asked questions or made comment, Rose, Pam, Cheryl, Mrs. Abraham, Phil, Shipley, my friend from kindergarten. So everyone, this makes me so excited. It's all good. I learned how to see the chat when I have to scroll. I'm so excited. I learned something today. It's all good. And I hope just as a reminder, everything on my Facebook page is public. I have also posted, I'll probably wait a day or two because I forgot to post last week's. So I'm posting that probably, I think I have that to come out at one, but I have, I think this is the fifth video. So I try not to post as much. So just scroll down or you can go to YouTube. Everyone has, again, is doing the best they can in these challenging times, try to find the opportunity, the good, where you can, lessons learned that I talked about earlier, how you can be grateful. That's one thing I'm trying to, to do. Anything you'd like to share? You know, we have collective wisdom from the group, but I'm always open. I'm not the be and all to these subjects, and I always welcome different point of view. Ah, so Rose, California. I was in. I used to live in Los Angeles, Rose, for ten years. So she, I know that we are supposed to go to the beach Memorial Day weekend. We always go every year with my family, and I'm. I want us to be safe, but I'm really hoping we open up the beach because I need to get out. I need to walk on the beach, smell some ocean air, and just. And my husband needs. He definitely needs a break. He looks forward to this break every year. And, we're very fortunate that he is working. Keep your eye on the prize. Know that the sun is coming. I feel like it's peeking out from behind the clouds. Do what you can to be safe. Do what you can to support small business. Do what you can to spread love. 
do what we can to check on each other, love one another to the best of your abilities, and do what you can to be a helping hand to someone. We're all in this together, and the more we realize that, the more we'll be able to get through it. But we will see the sun shining again, I promise, and we'll be able to get outside, walk again. I think we're having a new normal, and I think that that's okay. I think, again, it is what it is, and and my hope is that we'll have a lot more good come out of this eventually than the not so good. All right, everyone, go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. And we'll see.